Okay, hello everyone. Hello everyone. Uh, I'm Higon Prof from Samsung Electronics. Um, I'm going to talk about the auto caching for uh, byte addressable CXS storage devices. The auto caching can support the uh, DAX and the page cache at the same time for different blocks on the VFS layer so that the application can use the page cache for the hot data and the cold data, uh, the DAX for the cold data. Okay, this is agenda today. Uh, I'm going to talk about the motivation first and then discuss the design and implementation of auto caching and then challenges. After that, I will show the uh, preliminary result and our next plan. Okay, let me start with the motivation. So with the CXL, we're gonna have uh, um, many new types of uh, storage devices like um, dual interface, CXL SSD, byte addressable uh, storage, storage devices or many different kinds of the, uh, computational uh, devices. This slide shows the uh, dual interface uh, CXL SSD and the byte, byte addressable the, uh, storage devices. Left hand shows the, um, the uh, dual interface uh, CXL SSD. As you can see, it can support the .io and .mem at the same time. So application can use the uh, the dot IO for throughput oriented uh, the workload, while um, it can use the dot mem for the uh, latency sensitive uh, data. For worst case, auto caching can handle IO efficiently because the it can leverage the DRAM and the device memory at the same time. So we conducted some performance measurement with, uh, with using the Obtain. Actually, unfortunately, this Excel SSD cannot support the .mem uh, write yet. So we're gonna have a plan to implement the .mem write next, next quarter. So next year will be available to test. So I use the Obtain for the test because the Obtain can support the, the byte, Obtain is a byte addressable and it is pretty much the same to the functionality. So as you can see the, the left side, the page cache can show the better performance than the DAX regardless of the uh, number of threads. Uh, the right hand side shows the performance number with a uh, uh, different working size. As you can see, the DAX shows the almost the same performance regardless of working size. However, the page cache case uh, the performance is dropped down dramatically more than 90% when the system is under memory pressure. So from the, this um, the, uh, experiment, we learned that the page cache may be a better, better option when if the system has uh, enough memory, but if the system is under uh, memory pressure, then it's better, for, better to use a DAX. So the next, next test is a light test. So unlike the uh, lead test, DAX can show the better performance than page cache, even in the, even the system have uh, enough memory. This is because the flash daemon continues uh, to write back the dead, uh, dirty pages to the device and uh, interferes the applications because it, it can hold on um, the pages to the to to light the data to the obtain and the, the obtain case it also pollutes the uh, pay, uh, the CPU cache. However, we we increase the number of thread, then that shows the poor performance than the page cache. This is because uh, obtain could not support concurrent light efficient, efficiently. This is a very well known in the community. And um, the right hand side shows the. Uh, performance number with a uh, different working size. The trend is exactly the same to the uh, lead performance. However, the page cache still shows a better performance than the uh, DAX because the DAX should have a poor, uh, DAX cannot support the uh, concurrent light uh, efficiently. So, so from this uh, lesson, uh, from this uh, the experiment, uh, we learned that the even if the C the system is under a memory pressure. If the concurrent light happens, then the page cache may be better option than the DAX.
Um, this slide shows the uh, simplified block diagram of page cache index. I think I don't need to explain all, all details, but the, what we want to is that the, we want to merge them into single layer and the support the DEX and the page cache at the same time. So hot data can be placed in the DRAM and the access through the page cache, and the cold data can be placed in the PRAM and, and the access through the, uh, the DEX. Fortunately, um, the Linux, uh, it is very simple to implement because the Linux kernel already have most of the data structure, and uh, we just use the that the, the existing data structure for to implement the auto caching. For example, the Linux kernel already create the, the uh, device page structure and also create the, the uh, direct mapping area in the in the, the kernel virtual memory. So that what we need to do is that the, we simply insert the, the device polio into the, the file map instead of page cache in, to use the DAX. Um, this is a little bit detail uh, architecture of the uh, auto caching. So we we mainly focus on the uh, auto caching layer and the cache transition. And the auto caching layer uh, manages the um, device pages. And the, the, in order to manage the device pages, you need to know the uh, device memory, device memory physical address, right? So that the P PDM driver can uh, provide that uh, the range when it is initialized. After that, the auto caching knows the device device memory range and the manage it internally. At, once the, uh, the uh, after that, the file once uh, whenever file system is mounted on the uh, system uh, with um, the auto caching option, then the uh, file system try to figure out the file system can use the auto caching or not. So if the file system can uh, if the file system is built on the PRAM, then the it can use the auto, uh, auto caching. So auto caching layer returns the auto caching, auto caching range to the file system, and the file system keeps that range in, in the, the super block memory object. That means the, but the, uh, we don't need to add the auto caching range into the super block device format. That means the, we don't need to change the super block device format. We only keep the uh, auto caching range in the, the super block uh, memory object. After that, the file system knows the, whether it can use the uh, auto caching or not. If so, and then whenever the user send the read write system, uh, the call the read write system call or page port handler request the page, then VFS try to find the, the page in the, the file map. If file map node is empty, then the VFS try to allocate the page or folio. So, but the, if file system has a, the auto caching feature, then it try to um, get a device folio first. But the auto caching layer have a responsibility to uh, determine whether the page cache is better or the device page, device folio is, uh, device page is better. If auto caching layer decide that the page cache is better, then it just simple, uh, simply returns null. Then VFS will allocate the page cache and the insert the page cache into the file map. Otherwise, if we auto caching uh, decide that the device is a better option for current situation, then it takes it takes the um, the block number from the file system and the convert the block number to the physical address and the, the uh, device page and the return the device page to the VFS. And then VFS can simply insert that um, the device page into the file map. After that, the, everything is the same. It, like, just like uh, the page cache, because the page cache have a, can be converted to physical memory of the DRAM page, uh, DRAM memory, and the device, device page also can, convert, can be converted to physical address of uh, the device memory. So, um, the, so I explained about the framework so far, and the, the framework itself is very simple to implement. So the total number of the lines to be changed is less than 200 lines, and the VFS layer and the file layer modification is less than the 40 lines. And the, we also need to implement the caching transition layer, and the, but I, I'm gonna uh, explain about that later. But 
we have three challenges. The first one is the space overhead of uh, device page structure. And the second one is a cache transition. And the last one is a allocation policy. Uh, okay, uh, space, space avoid uh, of uh, device page structure. First of all, first of all the uh, page structure, uh, so size of a page, page, a structure page is a 64 bytes per the 4K bytes um, the page. So that if we add a 4 terabyte storage devices, then we have to reserve the 64 gigabyte VRAM because the page, page uh, page structure is metadata and the kind of hot data. So we need to keep the page, uh, structure page, we want to keep the structure page in the DRAM. But the most of, most of, most of device page structure is not actively used. Only open the page can use the uh, device structure page. Otherwise, if um, the file is not opened or blog is not mapped to the file, then the page is never used by the system. So uh, our solution is that we want to allocate the page structure dynamically. So in order to do that, but the, before that, if we allocate uh, the uh, page structure dynamically without any information, then it is very hard to convert the uh, physical memory to page structure or page structure to physical memory. It's gonna be very challenging. We may need to use the hash table or something like that. In order to avoid that, um, the complication, we use, uh, use uh, the uh, thumbnail page. For that, um, we create um, the page structure for per two megabytes. So that means the single page structure can cover the two megabytes, which is equal to the huge page size. So if the file system uses huge, huge, um, huge page, then the device system can directly use that uh, two, two megabyte structure page. But so if we use a two megabyte uh, page, then we only need 112, 12, uh, 28 megabytes for the four terabyte storage devices. And the, if the file system wants to use a 4K byte page structure, then we need to extend the uh, two megabyte structure to the uh, 512 uh, structure pages so that we dynamically allocate the structure page, the 512 uh, structure pages, and uh, convert the two megabyte uh, stru two megabyte structure to the thumbnail pa uh, thumbnail page. So the thumbnail page can uh, point to the, the base address of the uh, 512 structure pages. In order to access the um, uh, the four K byte strategy. Uh, 4K byte structure page, we need to divide the PFN into two parts. The first part can be used as um, the index for the this, uh, thumbnail page, and the other part, the nine bits, can be used for the, in, for the 4K byte page index. And uh, we also uh, change the information in the file, file map node. Actually, for file map node, uh, keep uh, the uh, structure page address, but we store the store the um, page frame number instead of the address of uh, structure page. We because we want to use some of a bit for the uh, one one page detection. I'm going to talk about that part later. Uh, this is the address conversion macro. So originally it's a very simple. They're just to the page minus the MMM or MMM plus PFN, you can convert the, the PFN to page or page to PFN. So we change the we change the uh, the structure of page uh, the um, the page structure. So we need to change the this conversion macro. So the PFN to page is pretty much simple, but page to PFN little challenge. So in order to convert the page to PFM, the first simple solution is that the page, we can add, simply add the PFM into the page structure. That is the simplest way, but it, it can increase the size of a page structure. In order to avoid the, the increase of size, uh, the, the, uh, 
change the size, uh, the increase the size, we can use a reverse mapping. So the page, page structure have a address mapping and offset. So it can find the, the file map node and the file map node have um, the PFN, but it is a little bit complicated. So instead of that, uh, we can reserve the, the virtual memory area in the VML log, but we don't need to allocate the, the physical memory immediately. We just allocate the 64 gigabyte virtual memory only. And then after that, if the application or kernel need to the physical memory, then we allocate the 32 kilobyte physical memory for 512 uh, the page structure and the create the mapping. After that, if it doesn't need to uh, use it by the system anymore, then we can uh, free the physical memory of Nick while keep the virtual memory. So the virtual memory can, uh, if we made up that kinds of virtual memory, then we don't need to, uh, uh, we can use the, uh, the macro uh, as of now. Next okay, one, uh, cache transition is a little difficult and uh, little challenge for us. Yep. Can you hear me in the room? Yeah. Uh, I was, I was going to ask uh, back a couple of slides. You said the, you know, we're you're talking about the classic uh, four terabytes uh, takes up 64 gigabytes of RAM uh, problem. Uh, Another and and dynamic uh, page allocation is, is one way to solve it. Um, the 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 other way that PMEM solved it is to allocate the struct page data from the device that's adding that much capacity. So if you're yes, 64 gigs of, of RAM is a lot, um, but if you allocate that uh, page structures from the NVMe device, since that's the one that's bringing on the four terabytes or multiple terabytes, then then the relative overhead is less because it's coming from a cheap device. Did you I, I, explore that? The, yeah, yeah. So I yes, yes, well, we get that. But the CXL SSD is extra challenging from a media perspective, right? Uh, so uh, right, so like rough implementation, there's DRAM behind the NAN, right? Like NAN is slower media than than DRAM, right? And you present that memory interface, and writes are even more challenging for NAN, right? So so I get it, but putting them on the device is probably not going to be the solution for this, wow. right? Yeah. Wow. Does that make sense? The, based on the device properties. The, 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 the device is too slow for strict page. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> Some, something like this. Let me continue. So the, basically, you want to use the, uh, the mechanism that used in the uh, um, tiered memory. So, so for the demotion, it's very reasonable and very effective. And the uh, tiered memory also the, also the um, use the, the uh, sub out mechanism. So we simply select the, the victim page from the inactive list when system is under memory pressure. And then we, we need to get the uh, LVA or block number from the file system and then get, uh, convert the block number to the physical address, and the, after that, we update the mapping. It, this procedure is a little bit different from the tiered memory because tiered memory have to allocate the slow memory first and the, copy the data to the to the slow memory and the change mapping. But the, it, this is a file system, and the, the file already have a block, block number, and the, the, that block already have a contents if the uh, page is not dirty, right? So we simply uh, uh, change, uh, change the mapping to the device. We don't need to copy the data to the device and or allocation page. But the but the uh, most important thing in the the auto caching that we want to keep the one page inside the device. But the autonomous uh, mechanism may not good solution for our purpose. So we devised a new solution that name is um, the, uh, it's a flex drone. So flex drone try to keep the one page inside the device. So uh, a promotion daemon virtually promote the access the page to the flex drone, but not physically move the data to the, to the host memory. And they keep watching whether the page is really hot or warm or cold. 
In order to implement, uh, the, realize this, uh, this one, we, we, uh, the flex zone has a limited number of pages. For example, the flex zone have a, the uh, threshold of 10, but if the number of pages increased over the 10, the, then the, the differences will be promoted to the host memory. But the, the page can, can pinpoint, right? So it can be demoted again. So if it demoted again, then we, then we detect the ping, uh, ping pong happens, right? In that case, we increase the flex zone and the keep the more page in, inside the flex zone to keep the more warm pages. But if the, the flex zone is so very stable, the, there is no movement anymore, that means the, um, uh, if, if so, then we increase the, uh, uh, we decrease the flex zone size and uh, promote the sum of the page. So we want to keep the one page as much as possible in, inside the device. But the, the another thing is we need, but we need to detect which page is warm, right? So in order to detect which page is warm, we, we use a four metrics. So first one is the IO type, second one is the access cycle, and the third one is um, the access frequency, and the last one is the recently accessed page. In order to get this information, we use the some bits in the, the file, file map node. So file map node have a, um, can contains the write ID and the access count. A uh, light ID can be used for the identify the concurrent light. So different ID can be uh, written to the device at the same time, right? And uh, the, we use we use the access count for uh, twelve bit for access count, but it divided into four um, divided by the four, and the each reason used for the, the uh, indicate the specific period. So we we pretty much keep the history. Right? So if the current period to solve the prior period have some valid value, that means the application periodically access the page. If so, then we give a high, highest priority to promote to promote to, for the page. And uh, we also consider the access frequency. So each period have a three bits. So maximum you can count to the eight, eight, eight access. But if the application access the more than eight times, then the page can be promoted uh, at the immediately because the page is heavily used by the application. And the, uh, we also consider the recently accessed page. Does that solution need to be separate? Like, like we have everybody working on memory tiering. Like, does this engine need to be separate from the memory tiering engine? That styles people are building? Like, shouldn't it be integrated? Uh, or it needs to be separate? But so, uh, yeah, this, this is a good question that, uh, yeah, yeah. Why would this be any different than than any other memory tiering, but just with different properties, right? Is kind of this asking the same thing, right? Why would this be separate than any tiering out there? What what would be the difference, right? Actually, the um, here the memory mechanism is working for the 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 system memory, right? It doesn't have any the persistency or something like that. It doesn't relate to the file system. So auto caching is a, similar to the um, the uh, similar to the tiered memory, but the target is different. We our target is a file, not the, the memory. So, so maybe is there does there need to be a separation for page cache specific tiering in, in any way? I think that's more of the general question. Yeah, is, is all the tiering now based on anonymous memory? Like, do we need file back tiering? I'm, I would look for you, Dan, on that. I'm not as sure, right? Oh, no, yeah. No, I, I, I was, it, it was for the room. It was, it was for the plumbers conference. Like, maybe this is a concept we need to think okay. about as a, as a community. Yeah. Time for questions. 
Okay. So, uh, first of all, I believe that this technique cannot be extensible for another file system. Mm -hmm. And mostly it's dedicated to X4. And if you are talking about SSD, a lot of file system, it's using copy and write policy. And it means that this technique cannot be used at all. Can we, how do you see that? Because on slide 10, it mentioned file system without any uh, particular file system type. Or it can be, maybe it can work for X4, but it cannot work for other file system. How it can be extended? Uh, so actually, the, we, oh, yeah, right, you're right. We, we implemented the, on the, the EST, EST4 file system, but I think it, 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 uh, it can extend it to any other file systems. No, so, it cannot. Why? I file system developer, you cannot, for example, extend it for copy and write policy. That file system uh, copy is copy and write, and write policy. policy. F2FS, it cannot be extended for F2FS. It cannot be extended for NILFS2. Mm. So actually, the autofashion layer pretty much isolated in the, in the separate layer. And the, the actually, we, we don't need to file system change it so much. The, Again, every file system is very specific. And for example, if file system is in copy and write policy, it means that application don't know where uh, real data is located. Only file system know. And it's not so easy simply take something from SSD. It will be some garbage. You don't know what is it. I think um, the... the... The point is not for this to generically work for everything, right? Yeah. Right, right. So the mo model where this makes sense is where you F allocate ahead of time, right? And you carved out the space that you're using and then use it, use it afterwards. In, in other words, more like a, a DAX based uh, approach too, right? Where you, 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 you map to the, the physical address ranges and you generally know that more ahead of time, right? Like that it's like, the, the, it's used to carve out address ranges that is not, not as dynamic, right? So I think that kind of model should work for this. Yeah, you need to specify that it's dax based. It's dax based, that, yeah, that, that's definitely shown here. One of the uh, observations about, like, yeah, I mean, so like um, ButterFS and things that have not been dax enabled, but, but people are working on it. But one, of the, but one of the observations is that for reads, this would be okay, like, uh, a, a DAX access for reads is, uh, um, but yeah, certainly on, on the right side, DAX is not there yet for copyright file systems. I think we should probably move on a little bit and try to try to wrap up. So, so yeah, oh, yeah, a little bit over time. So okay, the, the and actually this um, uh, the uh, for there the the we need to uh, consider the device characteristic because each device have a different different or characteristic. So it, I think it is better to provide uh, the, uh, pol uh, the policy control parameter to use space. Okay. And, uh, I, I just want to skip the, this, the, the other the allocation policy is, uh, because it is very uh, intuitive and uh, there's no arguing, I think. And uh, the, this is a uh, performance result. And uh, actually, it's a very not interesting. The, the auto caching just show the show the uh, same performance to the one that shows the better performance between the DAX and the page cache because the auto caching can um, use the both of them in uh, it depends on the situation. So, for example, if the system has enough memory, then the, the uh, auto caching can allocate the page cache for for the uh, read intensive of, uh, data, and uh, this is uh, the uh, right results, and uh, the, there is a little different between, performance differences between the DAX and the auto caching, and uh, the actually I I wrote the the reason behind uh, the below the, the table so you can read it. Okay, so 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 we implemented the framework so far, and we um, and we need to implement a dynamic stru uh, structure page allocation or pe uh, cache transition or something like that. And our uh, target uh, RPC date is uh, end of the 
for Q, uh, Q4 this year. Yeah. That's it. All right, got a question? Yeah. You look at the uh, folio. Because like folio is also trying to like folio. long term. Yeah. To, yeah, so actually, the, we use uh, the 5.18. It, it already have a folio feature, and uh, the, we actually we allocate the folio. Yeah, for folio device page. Yeah, for dynamic structure page allocation also, like for dynamic folio allocation, I guess, uh, because they also it's on the roadmap too, like kind of. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, we we have to consider that, and we you know, that that changes. And and I can. Uh, like one of the thing when you said uh, page to PFN, one easy way to solve it, page to PFN, is like because you always have this two megabyte struct page, it means when you look at 512, uh -huh. you have the first one that is free for you. So you have the struct page for, for the zero page that you can use to solve the PFN. Just, it just again, we can do that on, <laughs> offline. Okay. It's like on the graph, it's very easy to do. <laughs> sure. Let's thank thank the speaker. Okay, thank, thank you. you.